everyone, and welcome to today's Shocktober episode. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. Um, sorry for this one posting a little later. Normally, I uh, record these in the morning and then post them when I get to work. But uh, today, I had to bring my cat, Obi, to the vet. So he was having some issues and had to go get him checked out. So that kind of soaked up all my morning time. But I had to make sure my cat was okay, and he's he's doing really good. You know, I posted on Twitter and couple people you know they they sent their thoughts and just want to let everyone know he's doing a-okay all right so let's get into today's movie and today's the second of our two stephen king movies well two so far i don't know if there's going to be any more throughout the course of this but today i'm going to be talking about gerald's game which was another of the stephen king netflix movies uh yesterday i covered 1922 today i'm covering gerald's game which stars Carla, I can never know how to say her last name, Carla uh, Gugino, Gugino, yeah, I think that's it, and uh, Bruce Greenwood, uh, two really great actors in their own rights, and um, the synopsis reads, while trying to spice up their marriage in their remote lake house, Jessie must fight to survive when her husband dies unexpectedly, leaving her handcuffed to their bed frame. Uh, and this was directed and written by uh, Mike Flanagan, also written by, there's another name here, I'm just looking at the IMDb, um, Jeff Howard. So Jeff Howard and Mike Flanagan wrote it. Mike Flanagan also directed it, who I believe Mike Flanagan has also directed um, Hush, which is a really great horror film, and Oculus, which I hear is really good. Um, I haven't seen it. We I've seen like bits and pieces of it, but it's kind of one of those ones that came out around the time where there like weren't a lot of good horror films and then that one came out and i heard a lot of people say good things about it so one day i might check out oculus uh actually if it's on netflix maybe i'll check it out for this year's shocktober um now there's really not a whole lot to say about this movie uh without getting into spoilers so um i guess just kind of giving you the the basic setup is you know, their marriage is on the rocks. Um, they, they go stay at this remote cabin and he ends up handcuffing her to the bed and kind of playing out like a rape scenario that she decides that she's not into and she kicks him off. And he had taken a Viagra beforehand. So kind of in the heat of the argument, he ends up having a heart attack and dying. So this just leaves her handcuffed to the bed. She can't reach anything, you know, she can't get the handcuffs off without, like, seriously hurting herself. And, um, yeah, the, the kind of added thing is there's a stray dog that she fed, like, before. And, you know, the husband chastises her, like, don't feed the dog. And then the dog comes into the room and, you know, that's kind of a thing. It's like, oh, if she's there long enough, like, eventually the dog might come after her. So that's kind of a problem. Um, and that's, that's kind of all I can say without spoiling it. Um, you know, most of the tension from the movie comes from, oh, I guess I can say like the main thing about the movie, cause it, it, there has to be dialogue. There has to be someone for her to talk to. So she does hallucinate her husband and like a version of herself. And they talk about how she, you know, she's dehydrated, you know, she's there for at least a day. I don't know. I mean, maybe a couple days, but, um, yeah, so she's talking to herself, like a version of herself and like a version of her husband. And that's kind of, you know, what the full, like the main chunk of the movie is, is her trying to get out of this predicament and her inner thoughts being embodied by this version of her and her husband. Um, so before I get into spoilers, I will just say that as far as like recommendation goes, I liked the movie. But it, it didn't, like, blow me away. I kind of just thought it was okay. And um, you're really only showing up for one scene in particular, which will now lead us into spoilers. So consider this your warning. We are now going to talk spoilers for Gerald's Game. Um, yeah, so, like, kind of you're, you're here for one scene, which is the scene where she escapes and um, really hurts herself. And um, it's... It definitely made me cringe, and that's you know it's kind of what it's supposed to do. So there's a couple violent scenes in the movie where like the the stray dog comes in and starts eating bits of her husband in front of her. So that's kind of this horrific thing of she's trying to escape and watching this dog chew apart her husband, and it is just as fucking twisted and disgusting as you would expect. Um, 
there is also, I will say there's one really creepy image in the movie. So, and this is one of the things, I've never read a Stephen King book, but a lot of people often talk about how his endings are usually not that good, or, you know, sometimes they kind of, kind of go off the rails. Um, there is this whole aspect of this man with this disease like so she pictures like the first night when it's like pitch black in there because there's no lights on and you know she only has the light coming in from the windows which isn't much you see the silhouette of this bag man they call him and he's just this um inhumanly tall like really long limbed and like weird shaped head man who's just standing in the corner of the room and you can barely see him just like like coming out of the shadows and that's something that has made me realize that um, I that's like kind of the thing that always freaks me out the most in movies is when there's just something you can barely make out in the shadows. I always think of the first season of American Horror Story, which I really love from a storytelling perspective. It's like one of my favorite first seasons of television of all time. But um, it's not like scary to me. Like nothing about it is creepy. Like there's just good moments and... Um, there was one scary moment where it's uh I'm trying to remember it's been a long time since I watched it but it's like a, a kid and a ball rolls into the dark and the kids like it's like the camera slowly panning into the dark and naturally you assume like oh something's going to pop out but and maybe this was just the way I saw it and my brain messing with me but as the camera moves in you clearly see the silhouette of what looks like a face but then it kind of changes to look like oh it's just like a toy and <laughs> like I was like, oh, you know, you're expecting a jump scare. They're not going to give you a jump scare. And it kind of tricked me. But then as the camera gets even closer, it looks like a face again. And then the jump scare happens. And I was like, oh, that was that was actually really effective. Like, I knew it was coming and they fucked with me and, you know, they got me. And, uh, you know, I think the Duke has a couple moments like that. And, you know, Gerald's game has a moment like that as well. And it's pretty early on in the movie. And it ends up being like spoiler. So they, they basically say that like, Oh, that's like death, like waiting for her to die and coming to collect her soul. And the bag man, he has his bag of trinkets and he always takes something from the people that, you know, he ferries to the afterlife and like something that, so I guess before we get to that, we get into her escape. And so what her escape ends up being is she's able to reach the shelf that's above her head. And there's like a water glass on there and she ends up breaking the glass and cutting her wrist to get blood so she can use that blood to like slip her hand out like you know get it slippery but what she ends up doing is like <sighs> that's so gross what they call degloving where she like the whole all of her skin gets pulled off of her hand basically i mean it doesn't all the way come off but like she degloves like half of her hand to be able to get it out of the handcuffs and then it's like you know you have to move quick or you're gonna pass out and bleed to death and die and she does like end up passing out and she wakes up to the dog like kind of chewing and licking her hand and you know she freaks out and um she does end up getting away and as she's walking down the hallway the bag man is waiting at the end of the hall and she ends up uh putting something in his bag and actually i can't remember what it is it's either something to do with her husband or the keys or something like that and then she ends up driving the car and because she's losing blood, she crashes and somebody finds her and she gets saved. So it does have like a happy ending. So then we cut to, you know, like some time later and she's got her hand repaired as much as it can. It says, you know, she still shakes and has some like loss of feeling and stuff like that. But um, the big thing is the bag man was actually a real person. He was this guy with this disease that causes his, uh, limbs to grow like crazy amounts and he's all disfigured and he's basically grave robbing and like stealing shit from people. And I don't know, like to me, that was kind of an unnecessary thing. Like it didn't have to be a real guy, but at the same time, it's like, I like that image of him in the darkness it was kind of like the one spooky moment of the movie so it's, it's like kind of one of those things where overall the movie is just totally okay it's a good look at if you want to write a movie that's like one location and stuff like that it's a really interesting way to do it my biggest complaint is oh i actually left out a big chunk so 
there's a big chunk of the movie that involves repressed memories. So she, you know, as she's talking to her um, subconscious, basically in the form of herself and her husband, um, it ends up bringing up rep- repressed memories of her dad uh, molesting her. Basically, like they were watching a. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to go into a little bit of graphic detail of what happens in the movie. Uh, so they're watching a uh, solar eclipse and he has her sit on his lap and he masturbates behind her and she, you know, has repressed this over the years and they show like, you know, the whole typical like, oh, we shouldn't tell your mom about this and him kind of making her feel guilty about his guilt and stuff like that. Um, and I, I don't know, to me, it just doesn't really, I've never seen a movie or a story that deals with repressed memories in kind of an interesting or good way. Uh, to me, it feels almost unnecessary to the story. It's more, oh, she had to get handcuffed to this bed so then she can relive these memories and then come to terms with it. Um, I don't know. It just didn't seem necessary to me. Like I, th- I feel like... The whole thing of her being stuck to the bed is all you really need. But I get it. There needs to be like some sort of B story and stuff like that. Like, I just feel like with the repressed memories and this bag man is kind of like too many things. Like, I feel like you pick one and put more emphasis on that rather than include both of these aspects. So, you know, overall, I give it a I give it a recommend. It's on Netflix. So if you have Netflix, there's no reason not to watch it. And I do believe it's only like an hour and a half. So you can just blast through it. But um. You know, it's a movie that hinders on its performance, and Carla Gugino, if, if I could ever get her name right, I'm not sure, um, I, I she's a wonderful actress. I've really enjoyed her and everything I've seen her in, um, really liked her role in Californication, I believe, season four or five, um, and, you know, she's been in a ton of movies, and she's been working forever, and she's always been really great, and Bruce Greenwood is really good, both as her real husband and her ghost husband or however you want to call them, um, which feels like two very different personalities for uh, like his character, like the way, like the real version versus the ghost version. He acts different. So you get to see a little bit of range there, Um, but it's, it's an okay movie. I, I expected a little more out of it because I had heard like a lot of good things about it. I think it was more of just like, oh, like there's been a lot of shitty Stephen King movies and this one was not shitty. So I I would say check it out. But, you know, temper your expectations. Um, But yeah, that's going to be it for today's Shocktober uh, talking about Gerald's game. Be sure to check back tomorrow for our next horror movie for the month of October.